Are you all caught up on podcasts? Are you tired of listening to the same music over and over and need some fresh new tracks? Well, look no further. Gnome here, and I'm teaming up with The Hater, The Tailgater, The Tyrator, and Zuck's favorite prisoner. That's right, Jake from the Bleach Bros Podcast. We are bringing you The Hateful Gnome's Music Hut, a bi-weekly mini podcast all about music. We are covering music recommendations, bands, personal stories, concerts, even why Jake listens to the Beebs. Make sure you are following both the Bleach Bros and the Dads on Dayful for updates. Episodes are alternating on both feeds raise the curtain hit the lights turn the dials to 11 horns up we are live baby you're listening to the bleach brothers podcast hosted by b word and jake Welcome into the Bleach Brothers Podcast. This is B-Word, and as usual, I am here with my good buddy, Jake. Jake, I got I to gotta talk you through something here tonight. Like, help me, or like, help you, or you had a moment and you need clarity, like, or is this like when you always call me when I'm pooping? Just well, to are talk. You- I, I mean, we're we're looking at each other. I don't see you pooping, but uh, no, that's, you didn't call me. We're on a show. I'm just wondering: is this like one of those conversations, or is this like yes. a okay, okay, yeah? So we're both sitting down. So I'm going to pretend like you're pooping because I, I I ultimately have to vent. Um, so I have two buddies, right? Well, I have yeah. more than two buddies, but I have two buddies that were celebrating uh, birthdays. Um, so one of my buddies has a birthday on the fifth. The other buddy has a birthday on the ninth. So when this episode comes out, both of them will have celebrated their birthdays. But my buddy Jesse just moved back up from Las Vegas and he, um, my buddy Carlos really wanted to to go see titties, right? So we ended up, uh, well, that's the thing, right? So we ended up, the four of us or five of us, I'm sorry, uh, we ended up going over to Sacramento to go see titties and, and couple, couple gripes here, my dude. About the titties? Just about the whole experience. So number one, um, titties are nice. Period. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter what what titties are. Um, inflation. Okay, and I'm not talking about I'm not talking inflating about the boobs. inflating the boobs. <laughs> what I'm saying is a dollar does not go nearly as far in a strip club as it used to. Number one, really? yeah, it, it's almost like you got a tip of five. Okay, like not necessarily like a five dollar bill because if you're tipping fives, then you you know you're making good money. But you got to tip five one dollars in order to get shit going. Um, and then number two, like. Everything it is just costly in a strip club, and it's not what it used to be ten years ago. Okay. Um, not to say it wasn't costly ten years ago, but overall, it was a decent experience. But here's where I need to gripe. Okay, yeah. couple of buddies of ours have some salty hippo stickers in their pockets while we're going out and about. Okay, we end up having lunch at the spot. Had overpriced beers. Okay, food. But it wasn't it wasn't like the greatest atmosphere, but it was decent, right? It did the job. Mm-hmm. And our buddies ended up putting up some salty hippo nation stickers. Overt advertising, adhesive graffiti, doing like the salty hippo nation does. Yeah. And the whole purpose of adhesive graffiti is twofold. Number one, we're trying to get our name out, right? In a guerrilla marketing fashion, as I may say so myself. But number two, we, you know, when we're putting things up in or not necessarily we, but when people are putting things up in a spot is to say, Hey, we've been there or Hey, go check this place out. Right. Right. So we put up some salty hippo nation stickers, uh, in this restaurant and by we, I mean, they, and they took some pictures of it and sent it to me. So as usual, I went ahead and I posted those. I was like, Hey, yeah, let's tag them. Let's, let's make sure that people know that there's a spot here that they should check out. Well, as I'm driving back to, uh, to Northern Nevada, a message comes through and you and I happen to switch roles. You were no longer Jake the Hater. Do you want to attack that part of this yeah, real quick? Yeah, I, because uh, well, I got the message first. And I got a message because I, I know you usually get the photos. And w- w- some people want credit. Some people don't. Um, I will say this about the Salty Hippo Nation. We fucking love it. Keep doing it. It's awesome. Because in reality, if you look where people have put photos, or I mean the pictures, the stickers for the pictures, is, is in places that are easily removable or in places that other stickers are, right? So it's not right. like they're putting it in places that, you know, 
that's that hard to to fix. Like if you don't like it, you'll just take it down. We get it. Like you probably don't like it. Some, but I'm I'm gonna guarantee you that bathroom that I was put in for that guy or that place um, has probably had things written on the wall. It's other bullshit that they've had to clean off. Right. Right. Now, in regards to that, I get a I get a message saying, "Hey, please take this down." La da da da. Never attack our business again. So I went, "Okay, well, what's your business?" You know, being polite. I was told. I went, okay, no problem. I messaged you saying, hey, went and deleted all of them. Moved, and then I wrote, have a nice, I, I was being nice. I went, have a nice day, la da 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 enjoy your summer, you know. This is, you know, and I explained sort of the situation. And then they got snarky. Yes. Yes, and they did. And I'll, I'll let you tackle that because that's where Jake the Hater, like, and I even set, told you on the sidelines, I went, I'm just not in the mindset right now to pull the hater out. And, so this- uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so this restaurant that rhymes with Herman Boots uh, decided to uh, uh, attack their director of marketing and communications on us. Now, again, Jake handled this uh, in a very B word fashion. It was very professional. Uh, again, we switched roles on this particular uh, particular thing here. So, um, you know, you you were very nice and saying, you know, sorry, our fans post and send us photos. Uh, We've taken it down. Have a great day. And then he decided to continue going in on it. And he goes, Mm -hmm. thank you. Guerrilla marketing makes people smile. And then he continues on and says, this did not make us smile. Please do not ever do this again. (laughs) And I expected the hater to go full force. And instead, the (laughs) hater says, no problem. Enjoy your summer. (laughs) So here I am. I see this message. We, you and I exchanged a couple texts and I'm just like this son of a bitch. Like I, I totally understand that probably 80 or 80% or higher of the amount of stickers that are put up are probably going to be removed. And that's totally fine with me. And in no way are we trying to disrespect a business. No, but the, the way the guy fucking talked to us, like just drove me up a wall. So mind you, I had a two and a half, three hour drive home. Mm hmm. And for this two and a half, three hour drive, you stewed. You are fucking. I am just stupid. thinking about this, bro. <laughs> just thinking about it. So I end up getting home. I know that there's a that we you know we were in the dad's Discord and and we're talking about this and like they were going all out, ready to st- you know, Aaron from I had to say it was ready to start a Twitter beef. It was going to be his first. He was going to break his little Twitter cherry. You know, like I was all happy for him. And then then I took a shit. And as soon as I sat down on the toilet, as soon as cheeks touched the cold porcelain, I said, fuck it. I'm responding to this motherfucker. (laughs) And you responded. And I responded. (laughs) And so I said, more or less, that, you know, we run a business ourselves. This business that we have might not make us any money, but it is the podcast. And we we respect other businesses' brands. You and I do business with other businesses. Mm -hmm. In no way do we want to violate a business or, 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 or... drudge a business's reputation right that's that's just not us but you're a professional chef i'm a beer enthusiast right so for this particular brewery we we have things not to say that they want to use them but we have things that that you know help when it comes to doing food reviews or beer reviews or or just general marketing on our social media right we've got a pretty decent social media presence right now and so um I responded more or less with, uh, along that along those lines, but I also told him, "quote While I understand that this sticker placed by a patron of your business who spent collectively about three hundred fifty dollars today was letting our podcast know that they were at your spot, so we could highlight it on so on our social media. However, after taking time to reflect on how you communicated with us, I just have to say." <laughs> And this is where I got Jake the haterish. I said, if you were our communication director, your ass would be fired. Your tone of talking to someone who you don't even know doesn't represent your brand very well. And in my head, I went, you fuck. While that comment might not gain us a listener or may even result in a bad social media review, we don't care. You were a douche canoe in your manner of communicating. Please know that this is said without respect and then, you know, to counter your have a good summer, I went piss on your summer. And then I just left it alone. <laughs> and now we're blocked, uh, <laughs> which is, I think, my favorite part, because, you know, my feelings on blocking. But I, I guess I guess because I, I, there's a few things about this B word to unwrap. 
is okay. I understand he's unhappy about the sticker. Mind you, this was placed in on the bathroom on a metal on a um, on something that's easily removable, right? Yes. Um, the other thing is okay. You're upset, but our, our fans sent us a picture. They also sent us a picture of the beer. Yes. Uh, tag which the brewery, we which is what we do with all of them. We we post, hey, you know, here's where it was. Here's where a salty hippo has been. Uh, and you know, and we don't, we don't write like a review, like, Oh, go in there. But we also don't write, Oh, fuck this place. Don't go in there. Right. Uh, but it's essentially just, Hey, we were there. And the cool thing is, is like, if you look at our page for a second, almost all our photos are, are, are places that we have been, which the salty hippo is getting all over the world. He's in Australia. He's in, um, on the East coast a lot now, Hawaii. He's been at Churchill downs, a lot of breweries and stuff too. Right. And it's just fun to see. And so, mind you, I wouldn't have minded if, now mind you, I didn't go haterish on him. Like, like, you know, you said you did, we switched roles. But like when he was messaging me, I'm thinking, okay, one, we have a bigger social media presence than you do. Um, nobody's shitting on it. We're just, we tagged it. Our fans could check out your brewery now, especially we have a lot of fans in California. It could, you know, it could help out. It, it's not hindering. It's not, you know, spray paint graffiti. It's none of that, right? The other thing is he could, if he would have just been like, hey, man, you know, we didn't like it. We could have been like, hey, no problem. Like we could tell our fans, hey, you know, if you go in there, don't do that. It was done once. The salty hippos have been there. But, you know, to please disregard. If any business reached out to us and said, hey, we didn't like that. We have no problem discussing it with Zero. them staying it. The yeah. other problem is, though, too, it's not like we're going out and doing this all ourselves either. No. We have fans that do this and it turned into a big fun thing that everybody does and people still do it. And I'm not, like I said, I'm not telling them to stop, but it's also like I told you before, we're not opening Anthony. We're not telling people to go fuck in this bar and like come all over the walls and like, you know, film a video and, and, and de- degrade this business. No, we essentially no, not said, at all. A salty hippo has been there. Here's a beer. A, a lot of our fans drink beer. A lot of our fans like guy shit. A lot of our fans do stuff like that, like barbecue. We, we, you know, we've done stuff with other breweries before in the sense. Right. Right. And so it, I think it could have been handled, like you said, a little better, just in the sense of, hey, we didn't like it. Okay, cool. Let's like have a discussion then. Let's have an open dialogue about it instead of being a snarky fucking ass about it. Because I'm thinking, if you're a director of marketing and communications, your skills suck. And so it just shows me you probably know somebody there or you you helped start it and you just took on that role of you're like, it's like the people when I go into a restaurant and I find out they're the social media handler. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, so you play on Facebook all day for a restaurant. Good for you. I'm, I'm proud yeah. of you. You post three pictures a day. <laughs> Good job. What a fucking job. You know, I just think that the, I just think that it could have been handled a lot better. Um, you know, I, I have no uh, personal ill will toward the restaurant, but you know, they're, they're now in a Twitter beef with us and, and that's fine. And so they can be that way. However, um, you know, from from a business to a business, because regard, regardless of our hobby or our, or our want to make this t- successful or whatever, we do run this like a business, Jake. We we make sure that we're we're investing in it. We make sure that we're trying to put our brand out there. We're trying to get things that we think that our fans would like. Like we're we're just trying to to make it a good thing, and and it's become a brand for us. And so I definitely understand that I'm not trying to shit on somebody's brand. I I definitely don't want somebody to violate a business. There's just a number of different ways that this could have been communicated, and and you know it could have just said, "Hey, thank you for showing up here. I hope you guys had a good time. I took the sticker down. Um, you know, you you can go ahead and leave the social media post up, but just put in parentheses on there or something that just says." Hey, you know, they, they acknowledged it or whatever, but they just don't want stickers up the next time. And we'd have been like, Hey, cool. You know, no big deal. Or, or in any other fashion. I mean, there's a million different roads this could have gone down. Well, yeah. Cause I mean, even in the sense, like when I message back being nice, right? Like, Hey, like, you know, I get it. Like, give me the name of the business. No problem. It's taken care of. It could have just been like, okay, I understand you're probably heated. And then you could have been like, oh, okay, that was easy. It wasn't, it wasn't like I argued and said, fuck you. We're not taking this down. Fuck you. You right. know what I mean? Like I would have right. got like a snarky attitude from that if, if we would have handled it in a bad way, but it was handled like professionally, like, okay, no problem. Yeah, we can move on from that. I mean, yeah. what do you want us to do? Go, go tattle on the, the person that took the photo. Like get the fuck out of here. Yeah, no, there like, was, it, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So that got me thinking, you know, now that, yeah. now that that's over. Um, so you're a chef and so we've spotlighted a lot of different things that you've done, that you've been doing. You've been on TV. We've shared a number of recipes so far. Uh, we've talked about, uh, some of the specialties in that area, uh, some interests that you have as far as food, but as far as restaurant or restaurant experience, what, um, 
what do you look for in a restaurant? What what are some things that for you as a chef, when you walk in, make a good restaurant experience? Honestly, right now is um, familiar food that I like. I'm I'm past the stage of going out and trying really crazy shit. Like if I can find a really good ramen house, because I love ramen, I'll go there. Like we ordered ramen when we were in Seattle together. Yeah, that's um, good. If I can find a good ramen house that has tonkatsu, that's my favorite type of broth. Uh, maybe some uh, takoyaki. Uh, I will, I will go there. And so, but I'm I'm looking for uh, clean, yeah, uh, a, a good place to sit. Um, well, well, it's busy, but not so busy where you can't get in. But you know what I mean. There's enough foot traffic to show you like. Okay, there's like a reason pe- yeah. people are going there. Yeah, because I mean, yeah. there is that 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 thing like, you know, if nobody's ever there, then why would you go there too? Like I not right. that I've never eaten somewhere by myself and I've found hidden gems that way. Um but I guess it's food familiarity, uh cleanliness, um a hop and new spot like the hot spot. And then um after that, uh social media presence to be honest. So like pictures of food, because I'm one of the people that I do a few things. If I find out there's a new spot, I'll check it out to see if they have an Instagram to see some of their food that they have Two, I always look at a menu before I go somewhere. Um, I really like to read what they're doing, how they do it, how they price it, because, you know, that's that's a relevant thing. Not that I won't spend money for food, but I'm also interested in how they write it, because there's nothing more disappointing. Like when you go to a high end place, right? They treat people like they know everything. Yeah. And you've done that where it's like, it'll say like salad, right? And then it'll say capers, mignonette, uh, caviar, this, and it'll just name the, the ingredients in there. That's great, but they don't describe anything. And sometimes you order it and then it shows up. You're like, that, that looks nothing like I thought. I have no idea what that is. How do I go about this dish? And that that's daunting for people. That's My wife has explained this to me because she's like, I love when you order for me because you know. Um, I guess those are the things I look for though. I mean, I like, I just like, I like spots that pair together. Um, and so a big example is, and this is the new thing, food trucks with breweries. When you came up here, I took you to a really good spot. We had amazing Bon Mies. Yeah, those were good. Uh, you at Cascadia Brothers, we went to Saigon Bon Me, uh, got some of that. And then you tried a few beers, a flight, a couple flights there. And it was, it was really good. It was a fun time. Yeah. Um, and I told you they had a, they had about five carts out there. Which ones I like, which ones I don't. Which you know, which ones we could stay away from. And so I think that's another thing is is a partnership sort of deal. Like uh, there's another one up here that when you come up next time, there's Smoke and Oak Barbecue, and they're right next to Lou Whip Brewing, mm. and they actually have that sort of like interchangeable sort of place, which is really right. nice. But what do you look for, B Word? Um, I agree with you. I think that atmosphere is huge. Um, and you know, you and I live in two different climates. So outdoor dining for me here is awesome because we don't nearly have as the amount of rain that you have up there. Um, so outdoor dining, a good environment, uh, friendly staff, of course, but you could, you know, social media is not going to show you that clean bathrooms in a restaurant are pretty important. I realize that the food's probably more important, but if you have a dirty bat, a dirty bathroom, I, I, it just makes me wonder what the kitchen looks like, and that just doesn't sit very well in a food place. I like good beer, um, but I also like good wine. So, I mean, it doesn't have to have good beer. It doesn't have to have good wine. I mean, I can, I'm fine drinking water or a, or a soda or a tea or something like that, depending on the food and the atmosphere. But something that pairs very well as far as the food and the beverage. Um, like you, I also love places that ha- that highlight certain meals on their menu, um, whether it's on their social media, that it's a special of the day, or it's, it's a, a signature dish that they're showing their advertising through social media. It's always better to get a picture of something. I kind of feel like I'm dumb from dad's on day. Cool. Sometimes I just don't want to read the menu. I just want to say, here's what I want, or I want that picture or whatever. That's why I love like hidden Mexican restaurants because like they have photos of everything here Mm -hmm. or at least where i'm located like everything is a photo it's like i like that one i want that one right there so i mean pictures are really good um friendly wait staff of course but um but yeah i mean it's it's kind of simple dude i'm also a fat guy so i don't you know like overtly discriminate against restaurants per se but uh but yeah i mean that's kind of what i'm looking for Um, i will say i will say a counter argument to you real quick though we do have great outdoor dining here but it's seasonal, right? Like the summers here are beautiful. The one thing you've noticed though, B word coming up here a few times you have with me, every place essentially almost has garage doors. Yes. 
and they open and close them depending on the weather, which is awesome because also like sometimes there's days they'll half open those garage doors just to get that breeze and that smell of the rain and that sound. That's amazing. Um, And I enjoy that. Uh, There's a lot of covered outdoor seating too, if you're brave enough. But I mean, I I will agree with you that you get more spoiled with that than I do. But I also think it's the type of place that that lends itself to it, right? Like there's a right. there's a favorite Italian restaurant of my wife's downtown Portland that we go to all the time. And I hate when they sit us outside because it's that old bistro, like rickety metal table. I'd rather just sit in the restaurant near the deli counter and just eat there. You know what I mean? Right. And so I think that that's sometimes give and take too, depending on where, you know, the whole atmosphere sort of thing. But if you could describe probably the best... I'll, get, I'll give you a twofer on this question. The best dish or meal that you've had out ever, like, you know, and then the best place that you would probably recommend that you go to just for all the above of everything you listed. Okay. So I, I, you're going to have to give me a three for here because I have to take a cop out okay. uh, with one of them. Um, so my buddy and I, we actually took a road trip. Uh, I flew into Dallas. We went from Dallas through San Antonio, through Houston, uh, into New Orleans. Obviously, a lot of good food in the South. Uh, New Orleans has incredible food. Um, but the best spot we ate in New Orleans, I mean, we had incredible food in New Orleans. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that it was bad at all. But the best spot that we ate in New Orleans was um, the World War II Museum. Okay. And uh, I had their meatloaf. My God, dude, like I'm a fan of meatloaf. Uh, okay. Like, but it's not something that I just have to go somewhere and order. Okay. But, but we were already in the World War II Museum. And I, we were just having lunch and I'm like, Hey, I haven't had a meatloaf in a while. Let me just do the meatloaf. My God, dude, it was so incredible. We went back the next day. It was so good. My, I don't, uh, my buddy had, um, um, goat, um, goat shanks, lamb shanks, yeah, lamb, shanks. lamb shanks. And he loved it. And he ordered the exact same thing again. And so the, just from a food perspective, that was awesome. Uh, from a restaurant perspective, as far as, uh, like atmosphere, food, all of that sort of stuff, I ended up going to this place right outside of, uh, Monterey. Uh, we went to, to the fish house, Monterey's okay. fish house. Okay. Um, I went there, uh, based on a recommendation of my boss at the time. And I love Chipino. I love seafood in general. And there was a little bit of a wait to get in. Um, but Bobby Flay actually competed with the chef at this place and okay. lost trying to make the same Chipino. It was dude, not only was the food incredible, but the beach was a few steps away and we were right there at sun at sunset. And as soon as that sun starts to go over the horizon, I mean, you see the birds and you see all this sort of shit. It was fantastic, dude. Probably the best restaurant experience that I've had in the U S. Um, and I say that because I haven't really like traveled outside of, you know, the West coast, but um, this is my default one. I, I I don't know what the restaurant is called, and you'll have to forgive me on that. But it is in Venice, Italy, and yeah. it is this wonderful uh, pasta restaurant, and it's right in the town square. Uh, you're actually sitting at at Saint uh, Saint John's. I think it's Saint John's Basilica. Um, just the atmosphere of that. You're just drinking wine right in the town square. You're getting served right in the town square. It's just phenomenal. I just from a from an environmental perspective of just being able to sit there and enjoy it's absolutely beautiful so nice, dude. what about That's you awesome. best I, I got a few um so i'm gonna cop out too but uh one of the best experiences i had there was a chef vital paley uh from portland and he competed on iron chef america and his challenge was radish and the reason i bring that up it's important for the restaurant but i was walking by one day when i was in culinary school and i was starting to make a name for myself not in the sense of like i was becoming big but enough people in the industry was getting to know me sure um that i could i could sort of walk into a lot of kitchens and there was that respect being had in the sense of like they knew i was coming up in the game and i was probably i would i worked hard and did well and enough people liked me uh, but we were walking by with all our chef's coats, our knife kits and vital paley walks out on the street and goes hey guys you want to come in and try something now this is before the restaurant's open he hasn't even opened it yet. They're doing that soft opening thing. Kitchen's all there. And he invites me and all my friends in and uh, we sit down and the place was called Imperial. And this is before he opened. And his menu was going to showcase radishes because of his prominence right. on Iron Chef. And he literally fed us, I think, 15 plates of food, just all wow. of us like in between class. And we just talked about it and showed and he showed us how it was made. And, 
it was one of those things. He was also doing mixed drinks on tap in kegs. Like oh, he was wow. trying new things and doing a very good job. And the cool part was I went on a few dates with some other women in there and those always went well. And he remembered me on one of the dates I was there and uh, he knows a thing I hate. I hate uni. It's probably one of the worst things on the planet for me to eat. I just don't like it. I think it's overpriced and just gross. And so there is a time when you go to a nice restaurant and, and a lot of people that have listened have had this happen, but they'll they'll bring it on a mousse bouche, like a, a, a palate mm-hmm. cleansing, like in between mm-hmm. dish. And so I'm ordering, I'm, I'm out on this date and I'm having a good time and he's smiling at me and I, and he waves and the girl's like, oh, do you know him? I'm like, yeah. And the, the waiter comes out sort of snickering and goes, hey, uh, the chef wanted to bring this out to you personally, Jake. Here's the amuse boost for the evening. It's some uni. And I just fucking just looked at it and he looks at me. She goes, oh, you're going to try it, right? That's rude not to. And I had to eat it and I was so pissed at him. The funny thing was, is me and my wife went back for uh, brunch and it was probably one of the worst brunches ever in the sense of the dish was trying too hard. And the reason I'm wow. talking about this dish is I'm not trying to only talk about this restaurant, but it correlates into probably one of my best culinary moments ever. And it's the most simple thing. And I think sometimes simple food uh, goes past people because they think that you need 31 flavors and all this shit. Right. Well, I went into Imperial for like a brunch with the wife and she ordered an amazing, I don't know what she got, something that was really good though. And I just wanted lox and bagel. I just wanted a simple lox and bagel, some fried, in, some fried Indian flatbread with honey. And uh, they bring me my plate of food. And right. it's a puff ball of dough with cream cheese on the inside. And I asked them, what is this? They go, oh, it's our take on a lox and bagel. And I'm like, why? You don't need to do a take on it. It's a lox and bagel. Just bring me the." And so it wasn't very fun. It wasn't very inventive. It was just weird. Uh, but the down the road, when I was in culinary school, I've never had lox and bagel. It's one of those things I just never had growing up. You know what I mean? And there was a place called Black Rooster Cafe. And it was a tiny little like hole in the wall, all black painted, black doors, black tinted windows, a little cafe. And I was walking into culinary school one morning and I just, I happened to walk in and just ordered it off a whim. And when I sat down and had that with a cappuccino dude, oh my God, my life was changed. It was probably one of the, and it was like, I think my second year where I was really trying to really taste food and get out there and do things. I went and bought a cured book that day from Powell's Books down the road. I started making my own cured salmon at home. It was just, it was that changing for me. And it was just, and you look at it, it's it's tomatoes, capers, onions, cream cheese, cured salmon, and a bagel. It's not anything that's crazy, but it was done so well. And I was so happy. And I would just go there all the time until they permanently closed down. But I think that was one of my favorite moments culinary wise. Uh, I I think the only other one I'll mention really quick, B-Word, is um, when I've been going to Vegas now, I've been doing a lot of trips and my brother's there. And I took him on a chef's dinner for the first time in his life, which if you don't know what a chef's dinner is, it's where you go and you order the chef's menu and it's like a set price and it could be anywhere from like, you know, three plates to 12 plates, whatever. It's a tasting menu essentially of their, their top choices. And I took my brother to uh, Roy Choi, who gained prominence from uh, like Mexican Korean fusion and I think the LA or California scene. And he opened a restaurant called Best Friend. And we went and I was very excited. I looked up the menu. I already knew the dish that was probably going to be the hands down star of the show. And it was the slippery shrimp. But watching my brother's face and being able to describe food and everything. But then how also how he's like, you nailed every dish. Like you knew what would probably be the prominent one and everything. And funny thing is the Sal the Salty Hippos up in that restaurant too. Uh, the staff yeah, they didn't complain by. that I know of. No, they, they put it up for me actually. They saw the sticker on the table. We, me and my brother wanted to see him and we were talking about it. He's like, hey man, we got a bus on the a wall on a wall with a painted bus on it. Can I put it up there? I was like, of course you can. And that was also one of the coolest restaurants because the entrance, it looks like a Korean like liquor shop. Okay. But it's a bar. And then you walk through these vines and then it's like a beautiful restaurant, but with like a DJ. And so, you know, it's the hot spot in town, but I will recommend for the price and the food. It was fucking amazing, dude. I can't wait to try that. Actually, that, that sounds really good. You and I've talked about chef's dinners and the potential of trying to get down to Vegas and do that. So that would be nice. Um, with that, man, you ready to take a break? Yep. Bleach Bros Podcast is proud to align itself with Jerky Pro, a beef jerky manufacturer established by military and paramilitary veterans. Available in three ounce or one pound bags with great flavors such as honey glazed, teriyaki, red hot, apple cinnamon, original, peppered, 
sweet barbecue, and if you're ballsy enough, nuclear. Be sure to use our promo code to get some of the best jerky on the market. Use Bleach Bros 5, all lowercase, to take advantage of this offer today. Well, thanks, Jerky Pro, for sponsoring our podcast. I must say, Jake, I actually uh, ordered my own little set of Jerky Pro. I know that the uh, sponsorship one went to you. Mm-hmm. It is damn good. What's it your is favorite? good jerky. Oh, I love the teriyaki. Okay, so see, I'm good. a teriyaki guy. A honey glaze really got me and the peppered. The honey glaze is good. I haven't I haven't tried the peppered yet because it just arrived today. Did they send so. you apple cinnamon? Because they didn't send it to mine, thank God. But I mean, no offense, um, I just that just does not. I don't like cinnamon really, and I don't I've like got apple look. jacks. Yeah, I've got to look. I just got the package tonight, and I didn't go through the whole thing, so I'll, I'll look. But uh, speaking of speaking of things that are pretty pretty cool, or at least pretty interesting, there's uh, or there's jerkified new, or jerkified. <laughs> there's um, you and I are big fans of Star Wars and mm-hmm. all things nerdy, right? So the Marvel universe, the DC universe. Stranger Things. I mean, all all the all the good things. There's obviously a lot of good television uh, able to watch out there right now. Um, but I want to talk a little bit about Obi Wan Kenobi, uh, the Disney Plus series. I think episode four, uh, I think three or four just released. Um, what's what's your thoughts on this so far? Or do you, do you like it? Is there anything that you don't like about it? Uh, are you impressed by it? What are your thoughts? I'm liking it so far. Um... I'm happy about a few things. One, that it's a limited series. Yes. Which means it will end. Um, one thing I'm not happy about, and I'm surprised because I was loving this at first, but I've been thinking about it, right? When Netflix released a show, you get the whole show and you can binge it. Unless and it's then, the new Stranger Things. Well, but you know, that's part one and part two, but at least you get right. you, you get what I'm saying, though, because you remember yeah, Marvel, they it. would release something. And then remember when Disney Plus started doing it, I was like, oh, this is nice because you have a week and you get to think about it. I guess when it shows like like I I would rather it flip right, and I'm not trying to bring Str- Stranger Things into this, but I'd rather Stranger Things have a week off so I can think about what the hell's happening and talk about it than Obi Wan because it's like you also sort of know where this is going. Right, prequels are really hard, dude. They are because you know most of the stuff, especially if you've done the in between reading of canon and what is and what's not and where they've been and you know you know you know where people end up. So it's like okay, let's let's do the story of how they get there, but. Also, are you really that interested in knowing how crispy Anakin gets into a Darth Vader suit? And right, right. Not really to me. I right. Mean, I, I know he's right. powerful. I don't need to know all that bullshit. Like it, if it was something like where he was journeying and making his own lightsaber doing that. Yeah, I'm really cool with that. But instead, I'm I don't know. It's it's like um, Star Wars meets Boys and Girls Club. <laughs> That's an interesting take, but I can definitely see that. Um, That's how I feel about it. Okay, so so for everybody who's listening, we you and I have not talked about Obi Wan Kenobi since no. it came out. Well, other, other than we've asked each other if we've watched it, um, I have some issues. Okay, like and and I think you and I are on the same. I think you and I are on the same page. Like I watched episode one and episode two, and back to back, those were tremendous. Right, I really enjoyed them. I thought that they were really good. I watched episode three. Um, oh, so I guess episode four came out this week, but I watched episode three. Um, I don't know. I like like what you said. I this is Leia's story. This this is not Obi Wan's story. Uh, number one. Number two. Um, just from a fan perspective, like I want to speak to fans of nerddom out there. Like I I don't know what all the hype is about having a black woman in this in this film and and like there's a lot of hype about racism around obi-wan kenobi right now i don't i don't quite understand it um and then secondly on a separate note there's like all these groups against like kamala khan for miss marvel because she's muslim um just stop like there's just just stop like there's watch it or don't just enjoy the show or not or don't exactly just just fucking knock it off but on the adverse b word hollywood also needs to stop forcing shit I agree. <laughs> okay. I agree. Okay. No, hundred percent. I agree. But, but somebody's faith, somebody's, somebody's color, their skin. Some there's, there's some things that people just can't change. And I, 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 I say this all not fully knowing all of the semantics around those two issues. So it very well could be something mild that I'm speaking out of turn. However, just if you're a fan of nerd shit, just, just knock it off. 
Um, so going back to Obi-Wan Kenobi, like you said, I we know what happens to Obi-Wan and we know what happens to Obi-Wan in episode four. Um, he dies. It's, you know, like the first... And you mean episode one. four of the movie, not episode, episode four, four of the, the movie? Yeah, out. yeah. Sorry, sorry. It yeah, is Star Wars episode four, <laughs> uh, A New Hope. He he dies. Um, so we so we know that his his arc is not that long. What I do appreciate about this though is that they actually sped forward ten years from the Clone Wars. Um, so it, it wasn't like r- immediately after that. Um, but they had to. They did the Clone Wars show. B word. Yeah. So you you've already had that bullshit too. Yeah. So. And and so and and to be candid i mean i haven't watched any of the cartoons so there might be things that i don't understand um but i like the fact that there was references to luke i like the fact initially that there were references to leia leia's become a real big story arc like i think there's some cool things about her obviously she she named her son ben her and hans her and hans son ben that could be after obi-wan kenobi um who knows uh i i i like it i'm i'm curious where it's gonna go you know what the out what the ultimate outcome is but it got me thinking that there's there's a problem with star wars that i think you and i have to talk about tonight that we haven't talked about before there's a lot of problems with star wars but what do you got the problem is is that they keep beating the skywalker storyline to death like can we just move on from it yes and no Yes and no, B-Word. Here's the problem. So you the Star the Skywalker story is the story, right? And you got to beat it with like a dead horse. And we're sick of it. But we also, if you try to release anything else, it'll probably never do as well as the Skywalker. So that's the shitty thing, right? The I argue with that. Egg. I argue with that. Rogue One was arguably Rogue one's one, amazing. Of the best, one of the best Star Wars Mandalorian is amazing. ever. Yeah, Mandalorian as well. But Boba the answer that sucked. Boba Fett sucked until yeah. it became Mandalorian season 2.5 or whatever it was. Right. Um, so I have a problem that things just aren't creative. Like I, if you're going to do something like when the Mandalorian was first coming out, we didn't really know what, what was going on. We didn't know if Boba Fett was going to be a part of it. We wanted to know more about the Mandalorian race as itself. Um, but it was a, it was a storyline offshoot. There was nothing tied in initially to like Luke, Leia, Darth, you know, any of that, right? Yoda. Uh, there was a baby Yoda. It was we didn't just really Star know. Wars universe it, story. Correct. You would I like want, that. I get that. I want more of that shit. And I feel like we nerds love Easter eggs so much that we're willing just to beat storylines to death. Like it, it'd be like in Marvel, like if we just wanted, you know, Tony Stark to come back right now without a real explanation or a real reason for him to be there just to be there. And that, that would bother me. Um, and same thing with star Wars, dude. Like I, I love the star Wars universe. I do. I'm a huge fan of star Wars. I guess I'm just getting a little tired of the repetitive Skywalker storyline because the, ep- the episodes one, two, and three of the films um, were done kind of poorly. Um, at best, but looking back at them now, they're not well, as bad as people shit on them. I agree with that, and I think that that's an area that the Star Wars universe has actually Im- improved some of this. But you also look at episode seven, eight, and nine. Episode seven and episode four, are the the exact same storyline, and I was fine with it to a certain level until they switched directors, and then they had they opened up all these story arcs and immediately just closed them in episode eight and so i do have kind of a problem with some of the canon where it just seems like it's some of it's for fan service and like i i you know stop blowing smoke up my ass star wars kind of thing you know what i mean yeah my my, i guess my other problem is though b word is that star wars has had a chance to do really good things it's not that i'm a know-it-all but i mean you you look at a lot of fans right and they just fuck up like the best part. All right, all right, Darth Maul is a perfect example. One of the coolest looking villains. Great fight scene. Could have continued him on. You cut him in half in the beginning. You turn him into gone. a fucking spider. <laughs> well, then he turns into a spider in the Clone Wars, which is fucking dumb. And I hate it. I hate everything yep. about that. Because I don't know if you've seen it. There's a, there's a fan made film of Maul, Darth Maul on, on YouTube. I haven't it's like seen nine it, minutes long. It's I'll send it to you. It's fucking amazing. I'll highly recommend it. And it's it's like the prequel when he was training to become a Sith, which is awesome. Yeah, and he would have been a great character. Um, because you've you've done the the Reddit. Uh, Jar Jar Binks is supposed to be the greatest Sith of yep. all time. That would have been amazing. I was yeah. all for that. It all makes sense too. CGI is not by accident. 
I mean, Star Wars has always done a few things right in the sense of you do keep within the canon of the main story arc of the Skywalkers, okay? Now, do you beat it to death a lot? Yes. Do you always introduce great creatures that we like? Yes. You do. Yeah. Oh, and there's so many. I, I love the Tauntaun. I, that was me as a kid. I loved like the Yeti, the Tauntauns, the Bonthas, everything. That was my the favorite Ewoks. part of Star Wars. So they do a good job with that. They do a good job with Easter eggs. They do a good job with humor. They do. Their humor is always on point. It's it's yeah. it's it, it's done well. The problem I have though is the the stories they continue always are just bullshit that I can care less about. Like, and it's not like I said, not that I know how they should do it better, but you look at it going, really, really, that's what we're doing. Like, man, Boba Fett, that's really what we're doing. Like, even Mandalorian at the end when Luke shows up and grabs Baby Yoda, I'm like, why? Now yeah. we got to re-explain all this shit that he had a clone of Yoda and where did he go and what fuck happened to him and did he eat him? Like, what happened? <laughs> you yeah. know. Well, and I, I also, to a certain point, it was kind of nice to see some of the cameos too in the new in the new stuff. I mean, I thought that Bill Burr had a good character in in the Mandalorian. Uh, in this newest episode, did you watch the newest episode of Obi Wan? Yeah, where you had Ice Cube Junior in there. Yep. Like, okay, like that one was a little forced. Like, mm-hmm. I I get it. You know, sometimes having a prominent voice, sometimes having a prominent face helps. I just don't want it every single episode. And I kind of feel like that's where this is. This is in, in any star Wars product right now, you have to have a familiar face. Like it wouldn't shock me to see Samuel L. Jackson just show up. It wouldn't shock me to just see Liam Neeson just show up. Uh, And while I appreciated those characters for what they were, my, my palette, my, my nerd palette wants to be cleansed a little bit and move on in a different storyline. That's why I loved rogue one. Yeah, you because know some Rogue of the best One cameos? tied right into it, and it was perfect. You know some of the best cameos? You know uh, Jamie Oliver, the chef? Yeah. You know he was in Star Wars? Yeah. He was Stormtrooper. Had a helmet on the whole time. Didn't do it. He, yeah. he posted it later. Uh, the other one was the guy in The Mandalorian, the, the pilot, the rogue pilot. Yeah. He was one of the best cosplayers ever and got asked to be on The Mandalorian because of his cosplay online. They That's also awesome had... One. Who's the guy who plays James Bond? The, the the most recent guy oh um daniel craig yeah he was he was a stormtrooper in mm-hmm. one of the movies yeah. like I, i'm totally fine with the subtlety of that but when you when you make it overt and not overt advertising when you make it overt i it, it's just like okay you're trying too hard for fan service and that's that's what i feel like as a fan like you're just tr- i feel like you're trying to suck up to me for sucking yeah, they need to go back to their urban roots and really do a good job of figuring it exactly. out. Like they really need to go back and look at it and go, am I pissing everybody off by what I'm saying? Or am I actually like really trying to help out here? I, I don't know, b I mean, what if you, uh, let's do this real quick. If you could change uh, Boba Fett, how would you do the story different? I don't know. I don't know that I would have done a storyline around Boba Fett, to be honest with you. I think the most overrated a, character ever. <laughs> well, there's a lot of fan of, of fan stories out there. There's a lot of like you can't even really call it canon. I mean, there's there's just a lot of storylines that involve Boba Fett. See, that's the other thing that, that I and I'll I'll answer your question here in a second, but that's the other thing that I have a problem with. Like, you know, there's um the Dungeons and Podcasts uh guy who we competed against. Uh, Cody. Yes, uh, who we competed against in the in the the bracket challenge. Um, he does Star Wars Dungeons and Dragons. Now I'm not familiar with Dungeons and Dragons. Okay, so that's just not my cup of tea. But my understanding of Dungeons and Dragons is there's a lot of elaboration. There's a lot of continuing storylines based on my imagination, storytelling, etc. And with Star Wars, obviously you're trying to create new canon in whatever table game you're playing, right? I kind of feel like that's what all of the storylines of Star Wars are, uh, whether it be books, whether it be other media, like you're, you're just Star Wars, Lucasfilms, Disney are, are cherry picking from those to try to say, okay, maybe that was a good storyline. Like Kylo Ren, Kylo Ren was not a canon character. He was made specifically for uh, the last trilogy. Um, and I was kind of fine with that, but you just like shit on some of the other characters that were part of the fucking canon. Like, mm-hmm. like this is where I just get confused on it. So back to Boba Fett. I'm sorry for that. But back to Boba Fett. I just have an issue with taking a character that you don't know much about and trying to force it down our throats. And not to say that he wasn't popular, not to say that people don't like Boba Fett. 
I just really didn't enjoy Boba Fett until what was it, episode five or so when the Mandalorian showed up. And it wasn't because the Mandalorian showed up. It's because it was finally moving the storyline along. I kind of felt like I was stuck in one of the seasons of The Walking Dead where they just, every storyline was taking three days. Yeah, because I mean, I loved the episode where he got to know the, um, oh, what are they called? The Sand People. Oh, um, yeah, the, yeah. The Tusken Raiders. Because they're uh, one of my favorite, actually, like races in Star Wars. I really like them. I always have. I've been a big fan. Um, so I really liked that 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 background story of them. I thought that was a really good episode. So same thing, like how would you change Obi-Wan knowing what we know? I mean, that's the problem. Like, I guess I'm I'm in the same boat as you. I'd rather just have a whole new storyline than Obi-Wan or Boba Fett or these familiar things. Like, you know what was great about The Mandalorian? It introduced Boba Fett, but we didn't need a Boba Fett story. And then everybody right. was like, oh, we're going to get one now. It was like, we were fine having just The Mandalorian be there and Boba yeah. Fett show up every now and then. I'd rather there be a show taking place in the timeline of Obi-Wan and Obi-Wan show up, but not necessarily that it revolves around him and Leia. I'm fine with that. I think if if you're going to tell me that there's a that there's an Obi-Wan storyline, then make it a storyline where he's not on Tatooine. Make it a storyline that's prior to him arriving in Tatooine, spying on Luke every single day and fapping himself, and after the Clone Wars. But make it about a journey for something. Whatever that something is, get him off planet. Make make him chase some sort of MacGuffin in the storyline. I'm throwing that in there for you. And then um, go from there. You know what I mean? It's just, it's hard to sit here and say, okay, we're going to relive the Skywalker stories again. Like It's like people want a Yoda series. People want all these different things. I think Ahsoka Tano is a different character. I think you can, move, you can do a lot more with her mm-hmm. um, after Clone Wars. Um, I, I think that there are characters that you can take on that that are, that are good, that have, have a, a, a great potential for a storyline, I guess like, I should say. But I, I kind of feel like, again, we as fans, we we sit here and say, oh, I loved how nostalgic that was. Or, oh, I love that character. Like, let's try to ingest all of the storylines that we can around that character. And then you run out really quick. And it bothers me. See, I, d- I would never want a Yoda series. And the reason is that goes back to my argument of like Lost, the show, like the Black Smoke Monster. I don't want to know Yoda's race, where he comes from or anything, right? But I want to know. But I know no matter what answer they give me, I'm going to be fucking pissed off. Right. I'm happy knowing Yoda was Yoda. And he was the greatest Jedi of all time. Had his lightsaber, lived, you know, 700 or whatever years. I'm happy with that storyline. Would I love to know his race? Yeah, but you know what? It's going to piss me off. So why do that? It's sort of like Boba Fett did. Why give me all this extra stuff that I don't need? Why give me all this extra Obi-Wan stuff that I don't need? I knew that he trained Anakin. I knew that he fought him in the lava pit and turned him into a jerky pro. I knew that all this shit happened. I knew that he dies eventually and there were years in between it. I don't need to know all those years in between. It's great to have. I'm not like saying that I'm not going to watch it. I am, but I'm sort of tired of it. I'd rather there be a care. I'd, I'd rather them go figure out those codfish people that just fly the ship around and make a story about them. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'd rather learn some other Star Wars lore than the same fucking basic people we always get. Right. Do you well, feel, though, in that regard, B word, that there is a reason they use those characters, not just because they know it's marketable and easy to make money. But it's the sense, and I'm and I'm not trying to go down this political thing, but in the sense of Boba Fett's not a woke character, okay? Let's say. Well, no, he's really not. No, but what I'm saying is, is is it easier to go? Okay, we already have this character; people love him. But there's no, you can't really complain about him. Let's do that show, or let's make a whole new character, and now we have to appease the masses based on based on whether we're going anti woke and pissing everybody off, whether we're going super woke and pissing off. You know, the people on the other end of the spectrum, you get what I mean? Like familiar characters seem like they're protected out of that bubble. I think if you're introducing a new character, there's a segment of the fan base right now that wants to be able to identify with that character, whether that's based off of race, sexual orientation, gender identity, um, things like that. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm, I'm not saying that that having somebody of diverse 
background or diverse uh, sexuality or something like that is a bad thing. No. I just feel like if you're going to hard force it down our throats in a sense where, and I should, that's probably a bad way to say it. If you're, if you are taking it, taking the storyline and you're catering it specifically to that segment of the audience, regardless of the character's storyline, it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to include that within the broader scope of the story. Um, but I do think that that's the reason why they do look at some of these newer characters that they do want to introduce the diverse backgrounds is because that's an opportunity that they can reach that segment of the population. And I'm fine with it as long as it's like, as long as it meshes with the storyline. Yeah, I'm all for it. I'm all for it. Cause I can give a crap if it's a transsexual Jedi that, you know, I don't know, does whatever, as long as the story's good. As long as the story ties in well, as long as the other thing is, though, too, it's still about Star Wars and not about a social injustice or justice happening. Right. So my problem is that I feel like they do two things. They keep the familiar characters, like I was saying, because it's easily marketable. What's more marketable? Obi-Wan or Obi, I don't know who the fuck it is. Like, you know, some other the carp fish man that I talked about flying a ship. Like, what show are you most likely going to watch? More people are going to watch Obi-Wan just out the gate right. of knowing it. Because it's familiar. But two, it's a protected space in the sense of you really don't have to change that character all too much. Or if you do, you add a storyline that changes the character entirely and you're going, what the fuck's happening here? Now we got to redo the whole canon. Because I think that's what's been pissing us most off out of everything is over the years, we were beating the Skywalker story to death, but we're beating it in a way where none of it makes sense. There's no episode eight was the perfect example when he's drinking the fucking blue walrus tit milk on the beach and just like miserable fuck cunts. Like why, what is happening here? Yeah. So what are, what would you say are your top five star Wars films? Well, let's, let's do this. Let's what there's nine films, right? Well, there's there's 10. If you include rogue one, we're not. Oh, okay. Fine. (sighs) Top five out of all 10 of those top five out of all 10. Okay. Uh, Empire strikes back. Number one. Always will be. <clears throat> Always is. Number two is Revenge of the Sith. Um, main reason is it's not as bad of a movie as it as people make it out to be. I think we've all really reflected on it now and gone back. Right. Um, right. It has a really good. There are bad moments in it. I mean, when when he's like, your name now is Darth Vader. And it's like, that was like the lamest introduction to that scene. Or when right. Darth's like, no. <laughs> With the, in the cavern, you know, and the things start shaking. That's pretty bad. But other than that, it's actually a good film, and I'll, I'll put it up there. Three would be Rogue One. Um, different type of story. Plus, I I don't know why, dude. I got a secret crush on that chick. That oh, chick. Oh yeah. Oh, she's so hot. Oh yeah. Um, the droid. Everything about that movie was great because it was familiar enough with being different. Okay. Um, four would be A New Hope the start of it all okay Uh, and then five is going to be uh return of the jedi and it's it's just because the time i know the top three are taking up three spots in the top five but there's a reason they're there all three of those are a gem dude they're all great fucking they're they're great films they are great films so what do you got um okay so i am gonna go with my number one i love the empire strikes back uh, because it, it's it's that moment of terror without really knowing the outcome uh, until you get to Return of the Jedi. Um, so definitely The Empire Strikes Back is number one. I am actually going to put um, Rogue One at number, at number two. I think that Rogue One is an incredible film. Uh, start to finish, it's an, it's an awesome film. Uh, so we're going to go that. Uh, number two, or I'm sorry, number three will be Return, Return of the Jedi. Uh, number four will be a new hope and number five i'm actually going to go with the force awakens i liked what um what jj abrams was doing uh with the storyline i thought that it was a good continuation of the skywalker saga i thought it opened up a whole bunch of doors uh it wasn't until the sequel to that the last jedi where it just blew everything up and i was like well this sucks i walked out of the theater very disappointed uh but those would be my top five See, Kylo Ren to me was the exact how much I hate millennials and complain about them at home on video. Oh, games. yeah. He, he was he was the millennial Vader. Right. And I just I that's why I couldn't get behind it. Just watching his you. That's another another chance to have an amazing character. 
yeah. and you just made him a kid who lost his Xbox and doesn't yeah, like his parents. That's basically what happened. Yeah. And I'm just like, you got to be fucking joking right now. Like this, he, is, this is who I get for a villain. And then I get cloned, cloned fuck face over there too. Like whatever he is. I don't know. So that's, that's a good ranking. So if you were going to do, and there hasn't been a ton of series yet and we haven't finished Obi-Wan yet though. What's your top series that Star Wars has released? Okay, so I'm going to only do the Disney Plus ones because I haven't seen the the cartoons. So it's very, you know, uh, Clone Wars and and I forget what the other one's called. Um, those I haven't seen those, so I can't rank those. Um, so the three that I can choose from are uh, The Mandalorian, Boba Fett, and Obi Wan. Am I missing Has, any? Um, the Bad Batch come out yet? Yeah, but I think it was a cartoon, so I didn't. Watch it is. It. I just didn't know if you watched it or not. No, I haven't watched mm. any of the cartoons. So okay. unfortunately, those are the only three that I can rank here. Uh, I got to go Mando number number one, mm. obviously. Um, right now, I'm going to go Obi Wan and then Boba Fett. Okay. Yeah, you had a hard time. You just finished Boba Fett. I know. I know. I was trying to talk you into it, just saying you got to finish it. Uh, if I could cheat, I would do Mando one, then Mando two, yeah. <laughs> season, and then I'm going to do Ahsoka, 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 Ta- whatever her name, Ahsoka, Ahsoka oh, Tano. Uh, that's going to be my next series. <laughs> I think that one's going to be great. Ahsoka um, to me, baby. Yeah, dude. Oh man. But uh, all right, all right. Oh, sorry, you got me on a sidetrack because I was thinking of boobies and subies. Would you rather have her or a Twi'lek? I like Twi'leks, though. Me too. I'm a big um, Twi'lek fan. I'd probably go with a Twi'lek, to be Me honest. Me too. What color? Not trying to be raised, but like, you know, they, because... No, it's just orange. Just orange? Oh, see, I want the green one. The green one? Really? I want a green Twi'lek. Yeah, that's that's wow. my favorite, dude. Dude, can you oh. imagine those nipples? They got to be like like pink. No. Or no, brown. they wouldn't be. No, no, no. They they, they better not be, be so, green on green. It would be a color that we haven't seen before. No, that's dumb. I hate when people say no, crap like no, that. You it know would be. No. It would be. It would be like it would be like an avatar flower nipple. No, it wouldn't because here's why: your eyes can only see certain colors. So unless you're colorblind, you're you're seeing the same color as me. So it might be like on their planet chartreuse, blah 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 blah, blah but it's fucking blue. Okay, it's fucking but it's blue. Four D, dude. Like like you get wind from it, you get you get heat and cold from it. Like that, it vibrates. That doesn't like, change the color. That just makes it even better. That's just a better nipple. That's all you're doing to describe. You're not describing the color. You're not saying it's it's something I've never. Seen. yeah that means it's something i've never seen like a microwave that you know sucks my dick yeah that's something i've never seen but saying it's a color that we've never seen that's a stupid argument to, say, to then say it vibrates okay? okay those are two different things i want the nipple to vibrate in my mouth now but i don't care if it's blue <laughs> brown or whatever cum fuck color you got over magenta. there before. magenta yeah. chartreuse blah, 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 blah. But before we finish up if we were all characters in star wars we know gnome is an ewok yes who are you? Jo- uh, Jabba I have Hutt, two dude. that. Oh, see, I was either going to take Jabba or I thought you would be like, you know, one of those pig guys that just guards. Oh, see, those are dope. But no, I'd, I'd, I think, I think, especially after this last weekend going to the strip club, I would totally be Jabba the Hutt with a dancing lay in front of me. Okay. Uh, who's Dome? Jar Jar Binks. No, Dome is fucking Bill Burr, dude. <laughs> He's Bill Burr in the Mandalorian, just bald and angry and doesn't know what to fucking do, wants to just shoot everybody. Um, AJ, who you got? That's a good one. Um, you, okay, so in was it was it? Uh, I don't remember which one it was. The the episode seven where she's turning in um, the things that she found that she was rummaging for. You had that yeah. guy in the hut that was buying all of that shit from her. Yeah, yeah, that that, that, yeah. that would be stoned. I don't know what the name See, of that I, dude is. A stone for me is either R two D two because when he gets high, I bet I can't understand him, and he's just gonna whistle at me yeah. <laughs> and roll around. Or, or when he's really salty, he's fucking Weedo. Yeah, from uh, the little flying yeah. Joker guy. Uh-huh. Um. All right, so uh, I, I got one extra one. Aaron uh, is Boss Nass. Yes, I had to say it is Boss yes. Nass. Who 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 am I? B word to you. C three PO. Fuck you, dude. I, oh, hate I swear you to so God, much right now. I swear to I'd God, I'd rather be Jar Jar. No, you, you're C three PO. For sure. Why? Just Why? just because you have this demeanor to you where you talk in cadence 
and like you walk around like you're like you're shoving a stick in your ass and like your feet look different from one another so it's this you're whole thing I hate and then of so course right and now, then dude. of course as as you've got a as you've got a high stone next to you you're like well stoned what are we doing today and so i'm just like see i thought you'd either say chewbacca because you can't understand me and sometimes i just go hate or angry or jar jar but okay fine i'm fucking c3po well, whatever i think uh i think we'd have to add tyler into the mix and tyler could be our dar- our jar jar tyler from inner inner idiot i i guess i could do that we just need to go find a leia i'd like to find me a leia not gonna lie i'd find a twilight <laughs> with purple <laughs> nipples that vibrate in my mouth that's it <laughs> all right man well it's been a fun night yes it has fuck the star wars trajectory right now and uh if your name rhymes with human boots, fuck you too. <laughs> and with that, Thanks Jake, all- <laughs> what do you got for us? <laughs> Thanks for all the dirty talk. Come back and get sanitized. This is Jake from the Bleach Bros Podcast, and thank you for listening to today's episode. I want to bring to your attention our Linktree. Visit Linktree forward slash Bleach Bros Podcast for access to all of our socials, merch, and streaming sites. Linktree is L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E forward slash Bleach Bros Podcast. All one word. And if you enjoy our content, make sure to give us a like, give us a review on whatever platform you are listening on, and also invite your friends.